I am a photographer and a filmmaker, and I have lived in Chester for around five years. Over that time, I've got myself in involved in a lot of different things, and it's largely been in response to a need, or a need to cause a change. Now, I wasn't on my own in this. There was a lot of people at the time who felt that a change was needed, so I'm going to tell you how a collective movement started to happen. When I first got to Chester, there was a bit of a problem. Chester wasn't supporting its culture creators, and it wasn't supporting its creative culture. It was really focused on its history, and there's really nothing wrong with that at all. But what was suffering was this. Chester was losing its culture creators. So we've got a student, uh, we've got a uni here full of students who would look into Chester at the time and not see a uh, perceivable and functioning creative industry, um, which is a big problem. So if you're going to finish uni and then look at Chester at that time, there would be, you wouldn't be able to see something that you could go into, therefore you would leave, therefore we were losing talent. And that's a massive problem. Um, I also talked to some businesses, and they were saying that they couldn't seem to find the, the creative people in Chester that could do the work that they needed to the standard that they needed. But I didn't think that was true because I've met people who were here and working to a level that was very, very high, and they were very, very talented people, so they were definitely here. But the people that needed them couldn't see them, and that was a problem. Now, I'm not saying that the history is not culture. Of course it is. But that culture was created ages ago. What we needed was the new stuff because it's change and it's new and it's exciting and it brings people in. So you want to go to a city to find out what's happening now. So Chester used to have that, I think, but it just wasn't being nurtured at the time. So here's the big idea. We need to find and get together the culture creators of Chester. Because if you want a creative industry, you need to support it with uh, a contemporary culture. Because that's an appetite. So if we get people together, the culture creators, we have a spark that people will be drawn towards. And those businesses that may have been outsourcing to bigger cities, Manchester, Liverpool, London, would now be able to find creative talent in Chester and use that talent. Um, and every time one of those homegrown interactions happens, right, everything gets a bit more visible. So you've got kind of maybe a business will rebrand or get a poster done or something, and that goes on a wall. And then the next business along kind of looks at that and goes, oh, that's really cool. So basically, everything gets a bit more visible, and then that money's getting spent in Chester. So we've got the kind of little creative economy going on. Um, so basically what's happening is, is that can, can kind of snowball a little bit. So every time it get, one thing happens, it gets a little bit more visible. The next thing happens, and it just carries on like that. And hopefully at the end of the day, uh, we've got a creative hotspot that people would look from outside Chester and see. And they'd see us as a creative resource. So effectively, that flow of work would reverse. And it would, um, it, it would kind of mean that people were looking into Chester and bringing their money into Chester and supporting our scene and feeding our contemporary culture. So I thought I could potentially do something or fit into this to, to create that spark. So this was called the One Chair Project. <clears throat> and it was there to make a big noise about this contemporary culture. Um, it was a Twitter campaign. And basically... I was going to photograph the cultural heroes of Chester. So I asked the people of Chester, can you give me the name of your contemporary cultural hero? I put a lot of tongue twisters in this. Didn't I? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, and that's what they did. And I was going to photograph those people in this chair, and they would um, then be showcased in a big exhibition in front of the city as if to say, look, we've got loads of talent here. Get behind it. These are your people. Um, so that's what I did. I launched a Twitter campaign. It went absolutely bonkers straight away. Um, I wasn't ready for it. There was people retweeting and sharing and, and just getting in touch and giving me all these names. And we even got an article in the local paper. Now, this is when Tom pops up.
Hello, mate. How are you doing? So, yeah, this is Tom. <laughs> Tom is a guy that presented himself at this point. He'd heard about what I was up to, and he just... I think he felt some of the same frustration that I felt. He'd moved up from London a couple of years before, and uh, he just said, can I help? So I said, yeah, of course, you know. Uh, we used that frustration as a fuel. It fanned the flames, you know. It, it became the reason that this project had to do its job and do it well. So we got to work, and we got to work doing these portraits. So these people, they had to come and sit in the chair in the same spot and then affect that space around them. So they brought their own props and stuff, and then we, we, we ended up with something creative. So it's kind of like a metaphor for the bigger picture. Uh, I'm going to pop you down, mate. Is that all right? I'll just rest you against the tent. You all right there? Good. Okay. <coughs> um, at this point, I met these two guys. Um, so the first one is Alice. I'm going to tell you about Alice. She'd She'd started this chapter of a thing called GFN. I don't know if anyone's heard of it. GFN is um, part of a national um, movement. It's called Good For Nothing, and where people give their time and their skills, and, uh, <laughs> and they, uh, they basically respond to a need or an ask to create a change or make something happen. So that was really kind of similar to us. Because of its different approach, uh, GFN was attracting a lot of kind of like-minded, creative people so there was this, this pod of people forming there as well, and that was really good, and it, it, we could see that happening. So we were doing that, and they were doing that. Okay, great. This guy is called Andy Foster. He's an architect, and he's a real forward thinker. So he invited me and Tom and Alice um, to this big event that he put on alongside the business club called the Future of Business in Chester Conference. And that was quite strange for us. I mean, it was a, a big room with about 100 or so of the business heads and the leaders of the city. Didn't really feel like I fit in at that point, but it was really good because we were hearing off all levels of people that there was a need to move forward and make change. Um, and that was amazing. And that was a turning point because it affirmed that the need that we'd perceived in the first place was, was absolutely real. Um, and also, one of the councillors at that point um, came to us and said, I've heard about what you're doing. I've found you some money. I'm going to fund it. So she funded the exhibition, and we had that to go forward with and, and put this thing on in front of the public of Chester. There it is, but there was a stage before that we had a very difficult time getting this thing on. It took us a year, and we just kept coming up against no's. Um, and one thing to say here is that if you've got someone who's in a, a sort of a job between the bottom and the top, and they've got a lot of kind of hoops to jump through and a lot of responsibility on them, it's very easy for them to say no. Because if you say yes, you put yourself on the line and you have to do more work, and nobody likes doing more work. So we pulled some strings in the end and finally got a space, but it, it took a year, and we kept each other motivated. This is it. It was in an empty shop. And because we put so much effort into getting it, we thought, how can we take this a little bit further? Because you've all been to an exhibition, right? You go once, probably, for the free wine. <laughs> <laughs> the opening night. Yeah. Uh, sorry, but it's true. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, we thought, what else can we do? So it became about collaboration. And has anyone heard of co-working? You put your hand up if you have. That's kind of like quite a few of you. Right, yeah, so for the rest of you, it's, it's a kind of thing where freelancers get together and they can hire a desk and work in a space with other freelancers as well. And uh, it's really good and it's really healthy for a lot of reasons because it brings people together. Uh, in Chester at the time, there was, a, there was a space called Industry being run by these guys, Andrew and Reese. And we said, look, do you want to jump in with us and put a co-working space alongside the exhibition so that that space was being used to its full potential? So we did, and together we kept that co-working space open for the duration of the exhibition, which was three months, uh, six days a week, free coffee, free Wi-Fi, just really inclusive. We did loads of stuff whilst that was on. So we did workshops, we had, uh, the, the MP did a meeting, we had a GFN hack, 
Uh, we had business lunches. We bought people sandwiches. We got people together. And we even had a radio show doing a little broadcast from in there. So that was cool. And it was really good. And it was a home for positive movement and positive thinking. So we'd made a hub. And the next thing that happened was, because that hub was very um, kind of attractive to people thinking that way, there was a lot of communication going on. There was a lot of collaboration going on. And that meant a lot of con conversations around this kind of theme, this big idea. And uh, <coughs> we wanted people to be able to follow each other's conversations rather than trawling through individual accounts of this, that, and the other. So we made the hashtag make Chester. And we coined that, and we gave it away so that everyone could use it. We uh, actually, this was designed by Andrew from industry, and you can see it's, it's actually become a brand. It became a brand for what we were doing, and that's a little corner piece just clicking in as it coming together. Um, so yeah, and we started using it to name things. This is uh, <coughs> a little bit about the Make Chester thing. So we started using it to name things. It was, um, the first thing that we did was Make Chester Talks. And they were evening due in the, in the space. And they were really good, really well attended. Again, they were put on there to motivate people. And uh, free wine, by the way, will get you an audience. So there was two quotes from that night that really kind of summed it all up for me. And the first one was um, from a guy called Hems de Winter. Now, you might recognize that name because he's on your program. And he's speaking a little bit later. But... What he said was this, people are coming together like they never have before. There's this energy that is finite that we have to harness. And he was right. And the second quote is from a guy called uh, Simon Grennan. He's an artist. And he said, you get the city you deserve. And he was right. You get the city you deserve. Think about it. So there's a lot of people in that space motivated to do something and make change. And it had a message, and that message was make Chester. So where do you go with that? This was finite, it ended. But afterwards, we did some other stuff. Now the first thing that happened was um, murmurations. No, it wasn't that, it was that. Murmurations. Um, so we'd love doing the make Chester talks in the space, and we thought, can we push this a bit further? So me and Tom teamed up with Alice and Andy, who you saw before, and we put together this big day, this big day of lectures, and um, that was there to motivate people to go out and do something in Chester based on the original thought and the original ideas that they'd uh, experienced on the day. And we considered everything, we, the way people ate together, the way people came into the building, and it's, it was absolutely brilliant. It's called Murmurations because of starlings. So starlings are birds, if you didn't know. But they do this thing called um, murmurating, which is kind of flocking. And they do it together. It's collective movement. And it kind of is very beautiful. Um, but it works as a, a metaphor for our kind of make Chester ideals. And it did its job a bit better than that, actually, because uh, for that first one, two bird watchers actually bought tickets and turned up. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then stayed for the whole day and then really enjoyed it, apparently. So it, I guess, it, yeah, it worked. Um, that's still going on. The first one was June 2016, and we do it every year now. Um, it's, it started to attract people from outside of Chester. It's getting to a national level, which is kind of an important thing. Um, we're really proud of that anyway. It's, it's, it's going to carry on, and uh, yeah, I'll move on. So this is... Tortoise magazine. Has anyone seen Tortoise knocking around? Oh, that's quite... A, yeah. Okay, there's a good few of you. Um, we didn't have a creative publication in Chester, so we decided to make one. This is another project that came out of that hub space. I teamed up with a writer, um, Paul, and a designer, Kirsty, and we, we collaborated with uh, illustrators and designers and creative writers to put this document together. Uh, we put a little bit of input in there as well. And we funded it with advertising from independent business in Chester. Uh, very generous independent business in Chester. And it's free, therefore. So you can go into Chester and you can pick up copies of this. And because it's free, it permeates a lot better. 
This has also carried the Make Chester ideals with it. We still use the hashtag in the mag. And yeah, it really gets out there. So we did 400 copies of this to start off with. Uh, and we launched it a year ago on Friday. So it, it's our, it was our birthday on Friday. Happy birthday to you. Um, <coughs> and since then, we've gone issue two, 4,000 copies, issue three, 4,000 copies. And we're going to do issue four in uh, about three weeks' time, I think. So again, that's something I'm really proud of. And we're going to keep going with it. We think it's got legs. This is a drawing I did. <coughs> anyway, those are those things, some of the things that I've worked on. And for my part, that's my effort into making a change in Chester. If you think that you want to do something that's big, a big idea, a big scary idea, um, here are some of the things that I've found that might help. Okay, So the first one is the need. You need to establish what it is why are you doing something? What is it that you're not satisfied with that you think needs to change? And then you need your message. And your message is essentially your solution to your need. It's, uh, it's got to be a very strong message. It's got to be something that people can understand. It's got to be inclusive. People have got to be able to emotionally invest in it because it will benefit them too. Then you need to collaborate. Get a Tom. <laughs> Get a Tom. You can borrow mine. No, you can't. No, you can't. <laughs> Basically, a broad range of skill sets is what you need. You're going to need to promote this thing. You're going to need to get it funded. You're going to need to write copy and get artwork and do all sorts of stuff. All these there's people out there are really good at doing what they do, so ask for help. And if they buy into your message, they will help you. <laughs> the next thing is a network. So that's a kind of businessy word, but in this sense, I mean your sharers. You need people to share your message, and they will do. Just ask. You know, people do that on a phone or a computer, social media, and the word gets all over the place. It's, it spreads far and wide, and a network is much stronger than a small group or just an individual. And the next thing is, uh, I suppose, standards. You've got to keep your standards really high. Sorry, Tom. Um, keep your standards really high. Everything that we've done over the last few years has been to, uh, well, aspire to a national level. And that means that if you saw one of those projects in another city on the planet, it would, it would be okay and it would be respectable. Don't work to a local level down here because that stuff will just end up on a cafe wall somewhere, right? So that's where you need to be. Uh, celebrate. You've worked hard. Make it social. Get everyone together. And you deserve to do that. Don't forget, it's got to be fun too. And uh, <coughs> I suppose the last thing is don't wait around for anyone to do it for you. Help is not coming. <laughs> <laughs> you are the help, right? <laughs> so if you want to see a change, start one. Thank you.